Out with the old and in with the new. This week marked the beginning of a new administration, but one that will have to tackle many of the challenges that began in the previous one. Above all, though, it was a historic week in American history, one that ushered in many firsts. This is Politically Speaking. <laughs> From NBC7 News, this is Politically Speaking. This is Politically Speaking. I'm your host, Priya Sridhar. Thank you so much for joining us. This week, we saw the first black and South Asian woman enter the White House. We also saw the most diverse cabinet in American history appointed by the president. President Biden has a lot to tackle. So what can we expect to see from him in the coming weeks? I spoke to political science professor Dr. Casey Dominguez about it. What is going to be at the top of his agenda? You know, there's a lot of speculation about what he might do first, but one of the things that we're already starting to see is um, his posture on COVID. Uh, what might we see there when it comes to how he hopes to tackle this pandemic? Well, with any new administration, there's two different kinds of actions that the presidents can take, right? There's the actions that they can take by themselves through executive orders, such as uh, ordering masks to be worn on federal property, um, ordering uh, masks to be worn on interstate transportation, right? So there's, there's things that presidents can order um, on their own authority. And then there's um, questions that have to go to Congress and that only Congress can authorize. And so um, the, the, uh, the expectation is that the Biden people will send a, a big COVID relief package to Congress, bigger than the one that passed earlier this year. Uh, and, uh, and it will need to get a majority support in the House, which probably won't be difficult, Democrats having a majority in the House. Uh, and it will need majority support in the Senate. Um, to the degree that there are components of what Biden wants to do for COVID uh, or in terms of his spending priorities, um, he'll still need to deal with the 60 vote filibuster rule in the Senate. So he would need uh, either 10 votes to, to uh, get, uh, get a majority, a super majority vote in the Senate, or he'll need to get um, some, uh, they'll need to abandon that process and try to pass all, all the, the purely fiscal components of that legislation through like a budget re reconciliation process. Um, and so, it, you know, there's, there's, there's politics in Congress that he'll have to deal with, but certainly uh, dealing with the pandemic, um, we should expect to see Democrats come up with a bill for that, that, that addresses their own priorities now that they have control of the Congress and the White House. One topic that is of course of interest here in San Diego is anything immigration related. What might we see on the horizon when it comes to immigration reform from President Biden? So I actually think that this is one of the, the really big questions about the next couple of months. Um, I, I think there's a potential in immigration reform for a big policy win for the Biden administration. Um, uh, Democrats uh, support a comprehensive immigration reform bill and have been, um, you know, insisting on a pathway to citizenship uh, for the 11 million undocumented people in the United States. And, and really, that's broadly popular. It's, it's popular um, and has been for a couple of decades. Um, you know, obviously, it was, it was not in line with the priorities of the Trump administration, but it wasn't so long ago. It was 2013 that Mitch McConnell, um, you know, Repub former in the transition from being Republican leader, but he was, um, you know, he, he supported a bill in the Senate in 2013 and John McCain and Jeff Flake and a bunch of leading Republicans, including some who are still in, in the Senate today, um, voted for this comprehensive immigration reform bill that, um, you know, had a pathway to citizenship. Um, for the undocumented and a, and a citizenship for the dreamers and, um, you know, various other workplace reforms and, a, you know, making it easier to get visas, which are almost impossible to get, which is something that corporate America really wants. Um, and so this will be a really interesting question about the next couple of months is do we see sort of the corporate Wall Street, Main Street, Industry Association, um, you know, part of the Republican Party side with the Democrats for comprehensive immigration reform over the sort of more nativist anti-immigration wing of the Republican Party that was ascendant under President Trump. We also heard President Biden talking a lot about climate change and environmental issues when he was on the campaign trail. Is that something that we might see him address in the near future also? Yeah, I'll point to him including climate change in all of his policy priorities. Um, and so 
the uh, he'd gotten some pretty good marks from environmental leaders uh, and experts for uh, the people that he's put into uh, the White House, into science positions, and also into policy positions and, and cabinet positions in the, in the leadership of the executive departments. Um, it, climate, you know, climate change doesn't necessarily have to be addressed in a standalone bill. And I think we should expect to see um, climate action be part of all of the bills that Democrats try to get through the Congress, spending bills, um, budget bills, COVID relief, right? There's ways in which a jobs bill can be reframed as a, or a climate bill can be reframed as a jobs bill to address the economic crisis that we're suffering through. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things that has been happening in Democratic Party politics is um, environmentalists and people who are looking for racial justice and people who are looking for, you know, um, union rights and better paying jobs, those have been three different groups in the Democratic Party, and they've kind of come together over the last decade or so to um, you know, find ways to frame all of their issues in ways that are uh, they can all fight for them together. Uh, and it looks like the Biden administration is going to adopt that framework going forward to try to work on all these issues um, in a symbiotic way. Straight ahead on Politically Speaking, while we've moved on to a new chapter in the United States, we still have the Senate impeachment trial for President Trump coming up. I spoke to Representative Sean Patrick Maloney from New York about how Republicans' votes on the impeachment could impact their chances for re-election. And in his final hours as president, President Trump pardoned former California Congressman Duke Cunningham. I spoke to the attorney who prosecuted him. Stay with us. 